talking to that beautiful people. I'm sending him putting Facebook link. Hold on. If we dis get disconnected or the stream starts acting squirrely. I think I spelled it spell squirrely. Nope, spelled it wrong. How do I do that? Squirrely. Is it an E? That's still wrong. Well, let me just do this. Put the link. I'm trying to add all this stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. Trina, hey girl, hey. That's a problem. That's a problem. Say shalom, shalom, Jen, shalom. All right. Um, hold on. I gotta get the link again. There we go. There we go. Back and forth. All right. There we go. All right. Grand rising, grand rising. Shayla, great rising. Hi, right, beautiful people. Happy Wednesday. It is May the 18th, 2022, day 111 of year four, reading for the books of the morning prophets. I know the four year consecutive day count, day 1,129. Today we're going to pick up in a waspy on page 100 where we left off at and then hop on over to the meditation book on page 133. Oh, ah. All right, Father, we thank you for another day waking us up, getting us going on our way. And here we are again before we really get it started. Just seeking truth early in the day. Help us, lead us, continue to guide us in all that we do. Teach us to meditate appropriately and reflect on what we learn. All right, y'all. Chapter 4. This is the book of Apollo. You know what? And I forgot when we read yesterday. I was going to do a quick overview. I forgot. Oh, okay. Yeah, can a man learn to sing who here is not the harmony of a tune? How much less then can man or the spirits of the dead harmonize with the eternal whole if they perceive him not? May y'all help us to perceive him and who he is that we may continue to grow. All right, y'all. Chapter four. Hear me, O man and angels, from my words, learn to be wise and deep perceiving. He who standeth in darkness seeth not. The time of Jehovah, none can comprehend. And the light should be the delight of all men. But who practices to his, but who practices to his highest knowledge? Before my days, time was no nearer the beginning of the universe than now. There were men who believed that with death, all would be ended to every man. And Jehovah sent angels to prove them in their folly. And though they saw them and talked with them face to face, many would not believe. And in the lower heaven, they were the same. They would not believe in the higher heaven. And though Ethereans came to them to prove them in their folly and talk with them face to face, yet many would not believe. I searched the disbelievers to understand their souls, and I found they were more begotten in, un in, in harmony. They prided themselves in their wisdom, but, that, but that, that they called wisdom was as a serpent in the soul. Jehovah spake to me, saying, 
Hear thy creator, O my son. In atmosphere thou shalt appoint ten thousand lords with ten thousand kingdoms, and the earth and the inhabitants thereof shall be divided between them. And thou shalt build a new kingdom in the heaven and call it Gal, and it shall be thy judgment seat with a council of 100,000 men and women. And so after Gal, it has a reference letter A, and that says, in another place described, this country seems to have, wait a minute, hold on. I think that's the wrong A. Sorry. That was the end of that book. That's below, I'm sorry. Let's see. Right, okay. On page 109. <clears throat> Gal here signifies plan of perfection. That is to say, the next step to advance the physical evolution of humanity at that time required a selection in marriage. The objective was to overcome the inharmony betwixt parents, which would put in motion the spiritual qualities required to encourage the birth of children inherently harmonious with the great spirit. See chapter Simone, verse 28, Book of Safa, 1882 edition. It says, Simone is like a whole book. Hold on. See chapter Simone, verse 28, Book of Safa. Well, maybe, okay, Book of Safa. Let me just check. Maybe Simone is just one chapter in the Book of Safa. No, it don't look like it. Let me see. Book of South Five Samoa, five twenty-one. Oh well, yeah. I guess it's the first chapter. Okay, Gal, a measuring instrument, a plumb and level combined. Gal said. They gave my base a level, and the sights on the angle of the plumb line were level also. And in the distance of Tech Ghost, about 20 miles, discovered the rounded earth. By the gal was the earth proven to be a globe. By gal have I revealed Betty. Okay, so listen. This is something I am going to check into, right? Because, you know... I'm a flat earther. So, but I saw something yesterday. I saw um, what it couldn't really. Okay. So there was this little short video that I saw. And they said, this video proves, proves that the earth rotates on the axis. I'm like, okay. I'll, I'll you know, what's the word? I'll, um, anyway. I'll humor you, right? So I watched the video and somebody put a camera out there and they kind of like recorded the, they they set the camera out there outside in like an open field, pretty night, clear skies and all that stuff. And they recorded it on like this slow motion so that they could uh, see like the actual rotation. And um, they let it do it for some hours. And in it, it seemed as if, and I'm going to I'm gonna have to go back and find the video again. I literally saw it last night. It kind of just like popped up in the videos. Like, you know how you scroll on Facebook and you watch a video, then it go to another one. And, you know, it was kind of one like that. So I got to find it. I was like, you know, what? I'm going to have to test that. But then the more I thought about it, not to just now, I'm like, okay, so if I do that, because I'm like, I'm going to get a camera. I'm going to put it out in the field and I'm going to let it record for hours. I'm going to record it like on a, a, a fast motion like a uh what you call it the like the split second thing where you can record something for like an hour and it'll condense it down to like 30 seconds i'm gonna record it like that and then i'm gonna record it in like extra slow motion and regular time and then i'm gonna go and look at it because the video that i saw it looked as if the sky was still and the earth was rotating i'm like eh, i don't necessarily know about that i think the earth is still and the sky is rotating I don't know. It 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 was weird. Yeah, time lapse. Thank you, Jen. The time lapse. I just shalom, shalom. So I'm gonna test that, but until I prove otherwise, from all I've studied and, and seen so far, the earth is flat to me, right? But I haven't done like 
any of that type of research just to, you know, but I know that you're not going to fall off the side of the earth. And if it was a globe rotating, I guess um, at the rate that it's rotating, which I'm like, okay, if it's, if it's, if it's rotating, like we don't feel it. <laughs> Like, there's nothing that would prove that we are rotating. You know, I'm still early in this particular type of research. But, you know, everything is on the table until I get a chance to get back to it and go through it. Right. But this just right here, just this just reminded me of that. And it said, they gave my base a level and the sites on the angle of the plumb line were level also. And in the distance of Tech Ghost, about 20 miles, discovered the rounded earth. So I'm going to have to check into that. But anyway, I'm back here. By the gal was the earth proven to be a globe. By gal, I reveal Vede, a proven problem and exact. Gal, a geometrical language. Language is of two parts. The proven is gal. The unproven is imgal. A sacred instrument that... A sacred, a sacred instrument that cannot err. My sacred temples shall be built by Gal, Dowson, Chine, plumb line, Anak, Phonics, Amak, Ebra, a plumb line, a Gal Yi shall be placed by the altar, by the sign, Gal Yi shall man learn to prove all things, Vede, it shall be the symbol of proof, be patient that your sight may not err, saith Gal. Okay. All right, so that's the reference from this reference. Okay, let's go back. Verse 6 on page 101. Oh, great spirit, shalom. Great spirit, creator of all life. Can we please ask? Hold on. Oh, this is a prayer. Can we please ask, should we look into accessing our Akashic records, please? I don't necessarily think that there's anything wrong with it. Hear me out. I don't necessarily think there's anything wrong with it if you are um like really researching to know if your um if your motives are pure. That's what I would say, if your motives are pure. Because I did, I prayed that prayer. You know, you can ask Akashic records or you can I didn't well, yeah, I, I said Akashic Records, but I know it's like like the, the book of life, the, the 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 book that's written about you, right? Because you you have been written about, you know, and you can access that information. But I was careful with the information that I asked to see. There's some things that I just don't want to see right now. Some things like like the death of people. I don't necessarily really want to know that for real, you know, Um that's something that I think I would rather, as it happens, just kind of, unless it's something that could be prevented, I would say that. Unless it's something that could be prevented, I don't think I would necessarily want to know that like ahead of time. Like I said, unless if somebody's life was going to be cut short because of something, then okay, what can we do to, you know, adjust that? But if it's, I don't know. But that's something that I know based on my current experience in life and time like with family members and stuff i'm actually shown that stuff but ahead of time like a couple years ahead of time when it's somebody like close to my family or maybe like an associate i'll know maybe like and it's, i always say two weeks because it always seems like it's a two-week time period you know so anytime i have like a a dream about like losing teeth or some well literally about losing teeth um i know somebody is going to pass and normally they do within two weeks um and i find out within like actually i would say like the last few i found out that day who it was and immediately my dream is triggered so i try to go back to my dream, I'm like, okay, is there any indication in this dream about exactly who it was? Now, that part I haven't figured out yet. When I get the dreams, I don't know who it is, with the exception of family members. Now, with family members, I do know who it's going to be. Um, but the difference with those, when it's family members, 
I am alerted to that like a couple years prior. And I think that's because because with a, 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 a couple different times, I'm like, okay, why are you showing me if we can't do anything about it? And sometimes based on how family members die, some things could have been prevented because some of them have died from diseases that are completely preventable, you know, if they had to change their eating habits. But as I started learning about this stuff, I didn't really, I wasn't really able to pinpoint a lot of stuff. Um, so it's like, so then I realize it's probably, it's probably because it's given me enough time to prepare, to prepare myself for what's going to happen in the, the near future. Right. So up until this point, that's what I figured. Um, well, that's what I was figuring back then, but now I'm paying more attention to these just to see, okay, what happened? Who was there? What was going on? I start paying attention to them. I'm like, what are you doing? How are you eating? You know, and I'll, you know, I just, you know, I ain't gonna say it like I had a dream. I think you're gonna die. I don't ever do that. That's first of all, <laughs> I'm of the mind. Sometimes I really still don't want to speak certain things out in the air, but, um, yeah, I think you can ask. If, if your motives are pure, that's what I think. Some people, they, they, they tap into it and they don't have pure motives and they still get answers. And then they do stuff and kind of go around with the information that they get. So, I mean, you can really ask and access anything. And you can, you can really, no matter, as I've seen it, you can, you can ask for whatever you want. And when you get that information, you can use it for whatever you want to use it for. I'm just of the belief because of the path that I'm on that if it's not like for purity purposes, for like true growth for yourself or maybe help for somebody else. Now, what I do know is that you. OK, so here's how I understand it. The Akashic Records is like a library, right? You know how you go to a library and you can check out certain books and you can look into things. You can look into your own as far as you want to. But if you're going to look into like um you can also look into the books of other people with their permission you know and also after you get their permission then you get permission from the spiritual realm it's kind of like crystal ball readers and soothsayers what they do right they automatically get permission from the person because normally people come seeking them out hey can you check into this that's right that right there is giving them access to access their akash their what you call the akashic records or their their book of life right the book about them um so then when they go in now soothsayers or those who are like doing it for money they don't necessarily like ask y'all you know but there are entities there that will give you access <laughs> And it, it's it's crazy how it works because it seems like to me, and sometimes I wonder, I'm like, okay, so if anybody can get access to this information, it's like, they're, okay, let me make sure I explain this the right way. Based on my understanding and my experience, it seems like, to me, I would think that there, and there is in a sense, I would think there should be a guardian for all types of information um, that you can pull from the spiritual realm. And there is in a way, right? But we also have free will. I think all these things play into it. We also have free will, which is... Um, so say if you go ask for something that you're not ready for, right? Sometimes you can still get it. A lot of times when you're... When I say it's a lot of things at play, I really start thinking about the details. Okay, so you know how children, it depends. Okay, so if your motives are pure, right? And like, say you want to search for truth, you're looking for Yah, and like, really, okay, what's the truth of this, right? So it's almost like in that state, we're like toddlers, kind of, and we're asking for something. And sometimes we ask for things <clears throat> that we will get, like, just like the analogy with the car. So if my five-year-old asked me for the keys to my car, I'm like, no, you're not ready for that yet. You can't even drive. Although asking for the keys to the car to go to the store is not a bad thing. It's a bad thing for you 
because you have not been trained nor have you learned any of the rules of the road. And just because you can play Mario Kart don't mean you can drive my kart in the real world. Absolutely not. So spiritual wise, we also kind of operate like that. And when you're on the right path, you tend to have good guides, which are like parents, just like you have good parents and you have bad parents, right? The bad parents in the spiritual realm would be the entities who are there, who have the access to the same information and to give it to you, right? But it'll lead you down a path that'll get you off or even possibly get you killed because I know you ain't of age, but you come to my house, I'll let you get a little sip of alcohol, right? I'll go purchase the alcohol. That is bad, right? And you, if you're on it, like I said, so there is like this uh, warning and door I, I believe, as I've experienced, if you're on the path and truth, then your motives are really pure. Even if you're asking for something that you don't realize you shouldn't be asking for at this moment, there is like this, I'll just say like a divine blocking, like a parent would say, no, you can't have this. You're not ready for this. So we're going to put this off to the side. I'm not going to let you get this, right? So, but you can, in your understanding of everything, you can be like, well, okay, you may throw a little fit, but okay. I mean, children, it's like, okay, once... <laughs> It's over with, it's over with, they're going, they're doing something else, right? And so go ahead, go back, doing what you're doing. We'll come to this a few years down the road. But if you like one of them hard-headed kids, and like, I don't care what daddy and mama said, I'm going to do this anyway. And you go find some friends, you know, so you find them, them entities that are really kind of, whatever you want, come on over here. We won't, we won't care. They won't give it to you over there, we'll give it to you over here, right? But what it really comes down to is you just like guns don't kill people people kill people it and there's no there's no good there's no evil it's really the person wielding the power it's that same principle all the way through so yeah i said all that just to make sure you really understand when you go asking to access your akashic records and you and you can't access children's akashic records for them they have to be of age but Things that are shown, you can ask to be revealed, to reveal to you things about you. You can ask that, but like specific things, that's kind of, it, it seems tricky to me. Like you can't go in there like, I would like to access my child's Akashic record so I can see. You don't, they don't like open it to you. It's almost like, look, you remember how we was reading a portion of the book of the, the raw contact. Remember how they asked about um, Robin. Good morning. Good day. Look, so you know how they asked about the, the portion about the OASB. They said, can you tell us about the different books that um, the like the confederation or spiritual realm? They they kind of like came upon people where they wrote kind of like the OASB. They said, we can't tell you that, but you can ask about something specific. You can ask about a specific volume because if they was just to give you that information, like just just tell us which one so we can go looking for it. They say we can't do that because if we were to give you that, it would impede your discernment process to be able to decipher what's good and what's not good. Like you literally have to go through it yourself. But you can ask about a specific volume. It's like you have to ask the right question, so to speak, right? Because they're there. If you're on the path of truth, they're there to help you and not hurt you. And they don't want anything to be... Um, they don't want to harm you in any way. And they know there are certain levels of growth and things that we have to personally go through. Just like a, a baby chick or anything that's cracking through the egg. They have to do that themselves, right? They got to peck through it because they have to be strong enough to survive the first phases of life in this world. And at each phase, you have some type of resistance. And the resistance is not to make you think, oh my gosh, my life is going to end. I've run up to this resistance. No, resistance comes to take you to another level. And when you don't realize you that's what resistance is a lot of people just kind of soak and moan and they just go into depressions and stuff and they don't realize this is a, another phase allowing them to grow whether you run the hardships in the marriage relationships at the job these are opportunities these are blatant opportunities that you can see for you to grow and it'll take you to another level a lot of people don't get that. So it's just like, oh, I always run into these issues. Well, it means like you always got issues you need to deal with about yourself so you can grow, right? If you change your outlook on life, 
Earth School gets better and better every day. It's an opportunity, opportunity for learning at every corner. Okay, that's enough. I said all that to say yes. You can ask. Please ask, right? <laughs> and you will be guided. But I would say be wise with the with the information you ask for, right? You know, I can't really tell you what to do. If you got bad motives, you just got bad motives, and you'll figure that out down the line. What you have to go through in a situation and circumstances you'll find yourself in when you misuse information, right? If your motives are good, I'll tell you all day. Ask away, right? And it'll be revealed to you. All right, so let's go back. Verse 6, page 101, the OASP. And all thy lords shall be called Apollo, and they shall inspire men to make images of stone and wood. And the images shall have short arms and long legs and nails instead of claws. Excuse me. And nails instead of claws on the fingers and well-formed mouths with shape for motion of the cheeks. And thy Lord shall find the Lewis who have been preparing these matters by birth. And the Lewis shall lead the angels around about amongst the mortals, finding the most comely formed men and women and young children. And when they have thus chosen them, they shall report the matter to the Lords, and they shall send Ethereans to those mortals who are selected. And they shall be quickened by signs and miracles, and it shall be proven before all the nations of the earth and their kings and queens and governors that the comeliness of the forms are pleasant in my sight, wherefore I come to them. And those who are thus selected shall sing and dance by entrancement so that kings and queens shall be overcome by the achievements. And those that dance shall be made to float in the air and sail about in the dance. For I will turn the judgment of man to beautify himself, and in doing so, he shall learn to perceive beauty and harmony in my works. And after my works, it has reference letter B. Right, so that's kind of like that last sentence. For I will turn the judgment of man to beautify himself, and in doing so, he shall learn to perceive beauty and harmony in my works. Like changing your outlook on things, right? If you change your outlook and it's an opportunity to see beauty, you begin to see the beauty of the creator everywhere. Not just in nature, but also in people. Even the most ignorant people you run into, you can see the beauty of the creator operating in them even when they can't see it in themselves, right? It's a beautiful thing. It really is. One should not misconstrue this narrative as an endorsement of the repugnant principles of eugenics. The history given in Owaspi illustrates how humanity's development has been nurtured over time that, and that what is emphasized at a given moment varies according to evolving needs in shaping that development. At one point, spiritual qualities may be emphasized, while at other times, corporal development takes priority. During Apollo's cycle, refinement of the physical frame was emphasized for the sake of advancing the overall physical health of humanity. While it is commonly accepted that, opti that optimal physical health is dependent in part on optimal structural biomechanics, this has no relevance in any argument promoting racial elitism or the extermination or abuse of any individuals not meeting a predetermined physical state or appearance. We are all Jehovah's children and all loved equally regardless of the degree of perfection displayed by our personalities or our appearances. Improvements in physical structure and development, however, do have a direct bearing on one's state of health. Furthermore, inspiring mortals at that time to think in terms of a structural, a structural ideal actually encourage that transformation to take place because as we think, so are we. Thought influences spirit and spirit influences corporal. The truism that we become, 
The truism that we become what we think about applies to the development of humanity as a whole, as well as that of the individual. At the end of the book of Apollo, the text relates that when the state of humanity had completely degenerated, a form of eugenics was practiced by those in darkness. Any distortion of a valid principle brought to an extreme will result in abusive behavior. Kind of like what we just elaborated on a little bit ago when I was talking about, depending on what you're going to use it for when you get that information, right? Okay. We'll read one more chapter. We have, oof. We write at 30 minutes. Let's just read this next chapter. Listen, because it's good. Let's just read this one more chapter, chapter five. Think not, O oh man, the gods always deliver the nations of the earth in a day or by miracles. They go to the foundation of a matter. They make a man a servant to help deliver himself, right? If you need a healing in your body, you can't just pray and ask, Father God, heal me. Okay, I can heal you, but I need you to get involved. I need you to stop doing those things that are causing you to have bad health in the first place. Like if it's not a like a, a, a blunt force trauma, something that you had no, that it wasn't like you couldn't prevent that in any kind of way, you know, then you need to, you need to help me help you. Help me help you. Start eating a more plant-based diet, right? Because it's going to help change some things that's going to give you some strength and it's going to return to you a little bit more life than what you have currently at the moment. Listen, I'll read that again. Think not, O oh man, the gods always deliver the nations of the earth in a day or by miracles. They go to the foundation of a matter. They make man a servant to help deliver himself. They stir up the nations in rites and ceremonies first, then come after and appropriate the rites and ceremonies. And the women look on, receiving the spirit of the matter in their souls, which the which entaileth on their offspring that which is desired by the gods. With the host of high heaven, unseen by mortals, the lords stir up the whole world. In one generation, behold, a new race is born. Man is unfitted for dangerous war and no longer the delight of Druhas hanging around. And the Druhas and the familiars turn from the peaceful earth to them stale and unprofitable and bloody entertainments to their own petty kingdoms broken down and gone. Be wise, O man, and ye angels of earth. Hear the voice of thy brother, God of three worlds. I tell thee a great secret. These are the words of thy creator. Man and, women, man and woman are procreators. Whom they beget are theirs, saith Jehovah. Not for a day, but forever. Take heed of thy offspring, O woman. Take heed, O man. Wilt thou be entailed with Druhas to pull thee down? Will thou choose offspring to glorify Jehovah? Have not thy people boasted, O earth? Have they not said, O the poor ancients, what of them? Will they turn away from the idols of Apollo and set up on their own account? Can the people hand down a name and models to live forever? So I found it, Gal, in the place of Horrid. So I found it, Gal, in the place Horrid had been, extending over Japheth, Shem, and Ham, and the rest of the atmosphere in heaven. I divided amongst my ten thousand lords and lordesses, whom I selected and ordained in the manner of the ancients. The lords established themselves in kingdoms, both on earth and heaven, and in heaven. And they inspired kings and queens to erect images in the temples, and the images were given a name signifying harmony, symmetry, and music. And after music is the in parentheses is Apollo. And the names varied in many countries because of the languages of the people, but the but the significant I'm sorry, but the signification was that these three entities comprise the all light 
the creator, Jehovah. And mortals were taught by inspiration of angels how to make the images, for there were no corporeans sufficiently perfect for models. According to the perfection of the images, so were they reckoned favored by Jehovah, and the sign of Jehovah's approval was manifested in the time of the sacred dance given by the Suez selected, which was, if the whirling dance caused many women to fall down by enchantment, then was Jehovah pleased. What? Let me read that again. According to the perfection of the images, so were they reckoned favored by Jehovah. And the sign of Jehovah's approval was manifested in the time of the sacred dance given by the Suez selected, which was, if the whirling dance caused many women to fall down by enchantment, then was Jehovah pleased. Let me keep reading so I can understand this better. Hear me, O man. The enchantment of the women was what the Lord's desire for the impression of the soul of woman shapeth the unborn child. I can see that. Yeah. Mm hmm. As being a woman who was pregnant and watching what I do while I'm pregnant transfers to the child. Okay. Um, let me keep reading. Hear me, O man. The enchantment of the woman was what the Lord's desired, for the impression of the soul of woman shapeth the unborn child. Wherefore, they worship blindly before the idols, not being sufficiently wise to understand how Jehovah was laying down the foundation for the coming race. O ye of little wisdom, compared with the lords of heaven, how ye are puffed up in judgment, not knowing the race whence ye sprang. Jehovah's gods and lords, Mold the inhabitants of the earth as clay is molded in a potter's hand. They set them up and show them away, and set they set them up and show them the way, and say to them, Go. And mortals go on a little while, like a young child that tottereth and falleth. And again the lords set them up, and man in ingratitude forgetteth and denieth his God. The unseen angels lead man and woman together and say, Mary. And they wed and bring forth of the Lord. Then man inquireth, What meanest thou bring forth of the Lord? But his judgment is under a cloud. He flattereth himself that Jehovah created him and then went away. And since then he hath been his own master. O man, what is thy folly? How hast thou found such cunning ways to put off thy creator? What profit more hast thou to put him away than to try and perceive him in all things? Why would thou sing of man who is in darkness and of the earth, which is but a fraction of the great I am? Hopest thou not for wisdom, so that guardian angels may go away and rest? Why shall they stand over thee day and night to keep away familiars and fetals and druhas? Who shall close thy mouth against falsehood and thy lips against cursing thy creator? Hopest thou not, O man, that thou, that a wiser ape, hold on, let me start over. Hopest thou not, O man, that a wiser age will follow? When shall man learn harmony, symmetry, and music? Who will hire a musician that forever putteth his instrument out of tune? Why shall the gods applaud men or angels who live not attuned to the all highest? Show me one who is as good as he understandeth to be, that liveth as wisely as his goodness desired he should. He will understand my words. I can come to him and inspire him with great wisdom. He will comprehend the love a God hath over mortals and the patience of the toiling Lord, lords and angels. Hear me, O man, I will answer thee with great matter. The angels of heaven who are good labor for those beneath them. This is their work day and night. Think not that they go away to idleness forever. To the Ethereum, in industry becometh rest. To those who have attained to be gods, there is spontaneous growth forever. Remember this and be wise. To the atmosphere and to the mortals, idleness of soul leadeth downward forever. Remember this also and be wise. That might be our title for the day. So 
to the Ethereum in industry becometh rest. To those who have attained to be gods, there is spontaneous growth forever. Remember this and be wise. To the atmospheric and to the mortals, idleness of the soul leadeth downward forever. Remember this also and be wise. Behold the rose and the lily. And they are perfect in their order. Being one with Jehovah, they painted not themselves. Let thy soul practice with thy creator, and thou shalt become one with him, even his son. Find thou the symmetry of flesh, the symmetry of spirit, the harmony of music, and consider wisely thy behavior. The star of Jehovah is within thy soul. Feed it, O man, and thou, O angel of heaven, and it will grow to be a god. Rob it or starve it, and thou shalt remain nothing. It is weak and dim in the vein. It is bright and of great power in him who forgetteth himself and laboring for others. And that is the end of chapter five. But after the harmony of music, there was reference letter C. And we'll read that and then we'll be done with this. Okay. C. Music here refers to general expression or action. In other words, gracefulness in all things. 1882 edition. Okay. So we'll pause right here. That was good. We'll pick up with chapter six. On the morrow, let's hop on over here to page 133 in the meditation book. And we got about 19 minutes left. Okay, so we was talking about concentration. Today, we're going to pick back up in this couple paragraphs with extended concentration and then on to cosmic consciousness. So you don't see like my chin up. Okay. What most people call meditation is in reality only the second step in the process of yoga meditation. When you are successful in concentrating the mind for a certain period of time, you will discover that the concentration becomes easier to hold. When this concentration occurs, it is like a magnifying glass which is placed in the sun and used to focus the sun's rays on a piece of paper. When the rays are focused just right, the paper begins to burn. This burning process is the goal of extended concentration. The practice of concentration leads to a state of mind wherein one's ego merges with the object being concentrated upon. Since concentration on one object is psychology, I'm sorry, psychologically equal to having no thoughts in the mind, the ego consciousness is free from the stimulation of senses and of thinking of itself as an individual entity. Thus, one may concentrate on any one object or on no object and obtain the same results. Through concentration, the act of focusing the psychic energy of the mind, the ego opens up and experiences expansion. Psychic energy of one's consciousness is therefore focused on a perception of itself instead of dissipating into various thoughts and objects which attract the senses. In this manner, one's true identity is revealed, uncovered from the veil of the ego consciousness. The expansion of many feel as a loss of body consciousness and identity. Let me read that again. Jean, you hear? I was thinking about our conversation yesterday. In this manner, one's true identity is revealed, uncovered from the veil of the ego consciousness. The expansion may feel as a loss of body consciousness and identity. One may forget one's existence as an individual and may feel the sensations of floating or falling. Often fear is experienced at this point since one's ego consciousness may have a strong grip on one's psyche. However, if this state is mastered and explored, one will reach the stage of expansion wherein one will experience enlightenment, in, enlightenment experiences. Jen, this is definitely for you. Remember, 
What happened to you? You were sharing with me yesterday. I'm going to read it one more time just for you. Listen. Let me just go back up. I'm going to go back up. The practice of constant. Okay. Let me just, okay. For y'all, that's kind of wonder. Okay. So I'm not going to kind of share like all the details of what happened to her, but she, as she's meditating more, she's experiencing some supernatural things. And you know how sometimes we kind of get freaked out of the unknown, especially if we haven't experienced it or it went as we grow, when we run into new things, we just kind of like, oh my gosh, am I, am I doing something wrong? It's unknown to us, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. As you develop, you become more sensitive to the spiritual realm, the spiritual realm and things that happen in the spiritual realm that are normal seems not normal to us because we haven't experienced it before. But the more you, it's just like the more you, like when you first go to a place that is unfamiliar, you're kind of on your guard looking around until you become familiar with the place and you begin to notice if, oh, I know what that is. And you hear sounds, you know, at first maybe you thought it was a gunshot. It's not really a gunshot. It's them over here working in this plant and this is a sound. Oh, psh, psh. okay. So once you become aware of your surroundings and what happens in this realm, you're less afraid. You know, all the fear and the anxiety subsides because you're aware of what's going on around you. So that's what happens as we begin to meditate and we begin kind of going back and forth, like almost at will. And and sometimes not at will. We just in a flow and it, we just open the door. And we just kind of float right in and we're looking like, oh, my gosh, what did I do? Is the devil messing with me? All of that stuff. Um, so she's kind of like at that point, more supernatural things are happening. With her. I was like. I'm thinking, this is amazing. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to read this again. So just kind of give y'all, so y'all not like wondering, okay, why she say that? We want to know too. So without giving too many details, that's what's, that's like the state she's at and she's experiencing um, different things, even to the point to like when she meditate. You know how sometimes when you really get fluent in praying in tongues, your prayer language will change. So sometimes people keep like one prayer language pretty much for the most of their meditating life or in a church world. But as you grow and it's not just, you're just meditating. She's doing a compilation of everything. Um, she, she, she's like practicing everything, like her diet plant based. And, uh, she, she's consistent, like with her meditation and all these other things. So everything now is working together and she's getting, let's say faster results. And it's like, she, it's like she's no longer walking. It's like she's she's been put into a car and it's driving her, you know. So she's experiencing these new, more rapid things happening with her spiritually, okay, without giving too many details, you know, because that's kind of personal. But it, it's really amazing. Okay, listen, I'm going to read it again. The practice of concentration leads to a state of mind wherein one's ego merges with the object being concentrated upon. Since concentration on one object is psychologically equal to having no thoughts in the mind, the ego consciousness is freed from the simulation of senses and of thinking of itself as an individual entity. Thus, one may concentrate on any one object or on no object and obtain the same results. Through concentration, the act of focusing the psychic energy of the mind the ego opens up and experiences expansion. <clears throat> Psychic energy of one's consciousness is therefore focused on the perception of itself instead of dissipating into the various thoughts and objects which attract the senses. In this manner, one's true identity is revealed, uncovered from the veil of the ego consciousness. The expansion may feel as a loss of body consciousness and identity. One may forget one's existence as an individual and may feel the sensations of floating or falling. Often, fear is experienced at this point since one's ego consciousness may have a strong grip on one's psyche. However, if this state is mastered and explored, one will reach the stage of expansion wherein one will experience enlightenment experiences. Lorette, shalom. Okay, here's the next section. 
Cosmic consciousness. Now, I didn't even know we was going to even read over this portion of day, Jen, what I just read. But as soon as I began to read, I immediately thought about our conversation yesterday and what was happening with you. Okay. Everything just lines up with, every, with everybody involved. Okay. Cosmic consciousness. Cosmic consciousness is the state which is reached when the meditator transcends all thoughts through the process of extended concentration. At this level, there is an awareness of expansion beyond time and space. The meditator goes beyond the object of meditation, beyond words of power, and beyond consciousness as an individual. There is awareness of vastness, infinity, immortality, and, universal, and universal, universality. This new realm of experience creates new mental impressions which burn away the negative impressions based on ignorance and egoism. They are impressions of communion with the absolute self, the higher self. This is the goal of the meditative process and it is the potential experience for all human beings. You know what? I just realized I started saying something and I completely skipped to something else. When I was talking about... um when I was uh, sharing a little bit about Jen, I, I, I gave the example about how people pray in tongues. But as you begin to grow, sometimes those the prayer languages or what you're chanting, it'll just change or switch by itself to where, like, say if, um, like, sometimes when people pray in tongues, they may not necessarily know what language they're speaking. And sometimes if they're not familiar with languages around the world, they'll just think it's gibberish, right? Especially if you get into like some of the African dialects and especially like the close, the Kosa language. That's how you said Kosa. I have to think about it because it's the, it's the click. I call it the click language, right? If you start doing that, you might think, oh my gosh, what's wrong with me? What's happening? That don't sound right. If you haven't been exposed to it and you don't know that's an actual language of a people that's native to Africa, you won't realize that's an actual language you're speaking when you start doing those clicks and stuff, right? Or it can change to Chinese, Japanese, German. I've seen people do that. Now, I personally haven't gone through all those languages, but I have experienced a change in language with a couple, right? And one of them, I know it's a, a, a Bantu dialect, right? So, but that's like, uh, that's an experience you can go through. Um, and I'm sure Jen don't mind me sharing that, but that's one of the ones that she's also having, uh, along with some of the others. She, when she, uh, was praying in tongues, she noticed how her language, um, kept changing. And even to where she even experienced the closer, I hope I be saying it right there, closer, uh, it's the, the clo closer language. So when she explained it, because I knew I'm like, you ain't crazy. That That's an actual language, you know? And so I sent her a link, but that was the whole reason for me saying that earlier, but I never finished it. Okay. So things like that began to happen. And it's, it, it's super, you, I, we call it supernatural because it's not something you learn or going to school to, uh, to be taught or even researched on your own. That's how you know your, uh, your, your meditation and your devotional life. You're, you're actually growing spiritually because your spirit is like the more of your flesh that dies, your spirit, because it is infinite and it knows everything. It begins to reveal and speak through this vehicle, things that the, the flesh cannot even begin to comprehend. But the spirit knows and the spirit can begin to lead and guide you, right? Even your own spirit who's connected as you grow more connected to Yah, your spirit will even lead you and guide you instead of your flesh leading and guide you. Kind of like I said yesterday well, when me and Jen were talking, um, it's almost like that, that shift is taking place to where by default when we're born a lot of times, our flesh just leads us wherever we want to go and our spirit is just dragged along. In the process, like, oh, my God, you taking us some places we really shouldn't be going, right? Because the flesh is, your flesh is more powerful than your spirit. But as you begin to meditate, you begin to reverse that process, not necessarily reverse it, but you begin to turn it right side up. Because when your flesh leads, you're upside down. But as you begin to meditate, you flip yourself right side up where the spirit can begin to lead you. Even to where sometimes, say, if your flesh want to do something, 
If your spirit has enough control over your flesh, your flesh can literally stop your flesh, like literally physically stop your flesh from doing a motion to bring it to do what it should do. You won't realize that or you won't even believe that until it happens to you. I'm telling you, it works. Something happens. That's how you know, okay. Because your spirit will literally begin to take over as the true driver of this vehicle. And it'll it'll rein it in. It really will. Okay. Cosmic consciousness is the stage which is reached when the meditator transcends all thoughts through the process of extended concentration. At this level, there is an awareness of expansion beyond time and space. The meditator goes beyond the object of meditation, beyond words of power, and beyond consciousness as an individual. There is awareness of vastness, infinity, immortality, and universality. This new realm of experience creates new mental impressions which burn away the negative impressions based on ignorance and egoism. They are impressions of communion with the absolute self, the higher self. This is the goal of the meditative process, and it is the potential experience for all human beings. This is the true essence of who you really are. As you gain greater knowledge of this realm, you will gradually lose all traces of ignorance and egoism, which is called Meshkanet Ari, and become one with your essential nature as the transcendental self. Oh yeah, that's true, Robin. She said when you're able to hear when you're able to hear that mighty still voice that will lead and guide you in all things. Absolutely. Okay, where we at? 56. Okay, let's read this little paragraph right here. Objects of meditation. Quote. O oh, behold with thine eye God's plan. Devote thyself to adore God's name. It is God who giveth souls to millions of forms, and God magnifieth whosoever magnifieth God. End quote. And that was from the ancient Egyptian wisdom text. In the practice of meditation, it is important to develop mental concentration. One can concentrate on subtle objects such as the breath or thoughts or gross objects such as physical objects. Concentration assists in the program of spiritual evolution by allowing the power of mind to be focused toward the project of spiritual enlightenment. And this allows the aspirant to break the veil of illusion that binds people to mortal and limited existence. The sages have enjoined that one should concentrate on the divine images and on the name of the divine. These objects will yield the greatest results most efficiently. That's interesting. How over in Oaspe, it was talking about the images, right? That's, that's cool. The sages have enjoined that one should concentrate on the divine images and on the, and on the name of the divine. These objects will yield the greatest results most efficiently. The names are concentrated upon through Hesi and Shammai, or this chant and divine singing, or praying in tongues and worshiping, right? Same thing, chant and divine singing. The image is concentrated upon through ritual and sustained visualization of the images, icon, icon, iconographies of the divine, pictures, sculptures, etc., depicting the divine in all its form forms, i.e. male and female divinities, as well as abstract forms. The divinities emerge from the one supreme being through the act of creation. By concentrating upon the lesser divinities, insight is gained into the nature of the supreme divinity. The creation myths allow the aspirant to understand the nature of the divinities and thereby develop a devotional feeling towards them that develop into esteem and love for the divine, leading to spiritual enlightenment and ultimate unions with the divine. Okay. And I think I'll pause right here because we have 59 minutes and this is going into creation a little bit. Now I'll leave this right here because it's the same page. 
but we'll pick back up right here. So this is like a, it's going into details about creation and, and what it actually means. And it's going to give a few diagrams and stuff. So we'll pick this up. We'll keep that as being one section tomorrow. All right, y'all. Book and page number 134. The meditation book. But we are done. We at the hour mark. I'm keeping time today. All right, beautiful people. Uh, 134. I forgot to put my page on the Oasis. Thank y'all for hanging out today. Uh, the last few days I've been going over time, but I really need to keep time today. I really need to keep proper time every day. I I really do. Um, because we're going to keep it within an hour, but some days it just goes over. When I, so when I feel the need to. So um, I like to be open because if I feel like I should... If I feel the need, not just like because I want to. Sometimes it really do because I want to. But if I feel, if I like get an inkling that I probably should go just a little bit more, I'll go a little bit more just to make sure we cover until the, I feel like, okay, all right, really shut it down now. It's time to go. <laughs> right? So I try to you know, call it being led by the spirit of y'all or, you know, sometimes I feel it and sometimes it's like I just want to talk, you know, especially when I got nothing to do. It's the weekend. We can run over my husband's side eye me. All right, y'all, I got to go get out of here. Thank y'all for... <laughs> <laughs> Thank y'all for hanging out today. It is go ahead, rip it open. It is Wednesday, May the 18th, 2022, day 111 of year. Did I say the right day earlier? I'm, when I go back and listen to this, I'm gonna have to check. Okay, it is day 111 of year four of reading through the books of the law and the prophets, and of the four year consecutive day count, day 1129. We read pages 100 through 102 in OASP and pages 133 through 134 in the meditation book. All right, beautiful people. So with that being said, thanks for hanging out today. And may y'all continue to, to bless us and awaken us as we help him help us. <laughs> Doing what we know to do. Not just praying and think he's just going to sprinkle some salt on us while we're sitting here twiddling our thumbs. Not doing nothing. May we be active in our learning while he helps us, while we help him. <laughs> All right, y'all. I love y'all. Thank y'all for hanging out. God bless you. Good night. <laughs> Go ahead and end it, Tootie. All right, y'all. I see y'all tomorrow. Right now, 7.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Boots. What are you looking for? Oh, that's Aunt Leisha. All right, Lorette or Marche. No, I know where's Nani. I don't see Nani come in. Or oh, she might be here. She may just not have typed nothing in today. But I don't see her name. Okay. She's just sleeping. She might be. Or she could be in the meeting. She be having early meetings. Marche said, hey, Tootie. What's your name? Hey. This morning, did I tell you, like, um, I slept up real good. Mm-hmm, I heard you. Yeah. I was like, I did too, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, dude. Go ahead and end it. All right, y'all. See y'all tomorrow. Girl, you swipe left. You ain't finish it. No, swipe back right. <laughs>